I'm here inside the Hub Culture Pavilion in Davos, and I'm really pleased to be joined by Sumit Jamwar, Chairman and CEO of Global Gene Corp. Thanks very much for coming by. Thank you for inviting me. Now, you are writing the book of life. Tell me why. Tell me how. Well, um, the whole world of genomics is a fascinating topic uh, because imagine the possibilities if you were able to convert that information in your DNA and then DNA is basically a book of life which carries the operating instructions of what I'm going to be, what, what um, external characteristics I'll have and what diseases I'll have and then be able to interpret that and then use it to lead a healthier and very productive life. It's an incredible promise mm. and that's what fascinates us. And tell me how you're doing it, because there are competitor companies out there, but they seem to be based much more on a um, on a white Anglo-Saxon type population. Yeah. Is that right? And you're doing something different. Yes. So if you think about the fundamental transformation that is taking place in terms of healthcare right now, mm. um, and just taking the extension of the analogy we had in terms of Book of Life, mm -hmm. um, we have two incredibly powerful secular trends which are taking place. One is we can convert the biological information that exists in each one of us into machine readable information mm -hmm. at faster, better, cheaper. To sequence, which is the process of converting that information, took um, cost $2.7 billion mm. for the first, hu first human DNA. Mm -hmm. It took 13 years. Now we can do it for a few hundred dollars mm -hmm. in a few hours. The second trend is as we create this mass amount of data, mm. right? It's three billion base pairs. Think about three, three billion words. Mm. And we have to compare across. We have the trend around artificial intelligence and cloud compute and machine learning, which allows us to find trends. And when you combine these things, uh, we have the tool to, to be able to decide things. But the real challenge is that the underlying data is skewed. Mm. And 81% of that is from uh, people of European descent. Mm -hmm. And now to make it applicable to each one of us across the world, uh, we have to actually understand what good looks like for people of different populations. Mm -hmm. And that is why it's imperative to set the foundation right in creating those assets. So our focus is very much around creating insights into people mm -hmm. uh, from the rest of the world. Uh, we started in India. We have just announced uh, uh, our work extending into Africa. There are many other countries uh, which are in, in the pipeline. And our focus is very much on Asia, Africa and Latin America. And so what does this look like? What does it mean in terms of once you know the, the genomic um, tendencies or yep. the, the what's in somebody's genes, what is that, how does that translate into personalized health healthcare? Now, now imagine a, you know, a, a point in the future where the day you were born, we sequenced you. All right? And from that, we are able to predict what diseases uh, that we are likely to have and to be able to avoid those diseases entirely. And also, if unfortunately we had those diseases, to be able to find out what's the best treatment for us. Right? So our whole objective is in a very simple way is to say, how can we make 70 the new 40? Mm. Because you know, if you look at medical literature, 40 is the time when we start having you know, chronic ailments and other things and uh, life quality starts deteriorating. Imagine the possibilities when you move from 40 to 70. Uh, and what that leads to is people with much better quality of life as we live longer lives. Hmm. Uh, we know that people who live to 70, the probability of them living to 80 is lower than someone who's 80, the probability of them living to 90. So what we think is, we, uh, as we decipher the secrets which are in our DNA, we should be able to um, create a much more, much longer, as well as a much more productive life experience for each one of us. So thank you very much for stopping by the Hub Culture Studio here in Davos, and I'm Edith Flash.